presentation. I'd like to start with um, kind of like a, a bit back to front. Start with a bit of an overview of one of the results from the VPLD before I then sort of talk a little bit more about what it is and how it works. So um, I'm going to talk about a teacher called Nigel. Nigel had been in teaching for 20 years, he's a geography teacher. Um, he just started a certificate in e-learning and when he signed up with the VPLD, he was, he was okay, he was getting along. Um, over the last two years, he's been working with the VPLD. He's gone through a huge transition um, in his teaching, in his beliefs about teaching, and he's now got a completely blended classroom. He's got computers at the back, his students are working in small groups, they're working on projects around these computers, and he is suddenly transformed into a teacher who just loves teaching. He says he never wants to go back to the old way of doing it. Um, and one of the, the good things about this, he's also finding that his students' um, exam results are better, what they're producing is of higher quality, and the sign-up rate for his program has gone from 8 to 15 to 28 uh, for 2012. So he's, he's over the moon. So um, this is just to give you a very brief sort of notion that behind every good program you're going to have the theory. Now, some of the theory that uh, sticks in my mind is the fact that all learning is social on some sort of level. That doesn't mean it's all group work, and sometimes we will want to work as individuals, but we are always within some sort of community context with certain expectations. You're going to be using language, tools, and so on to communicate. If we have a look at this one as well, uh, the... Shapes in the middle are sort of like your pedagogy, some of your activities and so on. The things around the edge, yep, they're e-learning tools, and I guess that would be your main difference. The things in the middle would be any well-designed professional development program. The things around the edge are aspects that can enhance or enable certain things to happen within the program that otherwise might not be possible. Now, with the VPLD community, a big um, uh, factor with the success of the community is the fact that there's people working together. It's not an organically occurring community of practice. It was set up in advance. People didn't necessarily know each other beforehand, um, before joining, and it, we've definitely got sort of a focus um, as to why we're there. But there, is, there are definitely common interests, and kind of um, as Lai here finds, um, that these, we, we've definitely found all of these factors. One thing that we did find with the community of practice, when we first started it, so we were using Ning as our online platform, and we had a convener who very much was in there trying to create the Goldilocks effect. So, not to hold, not too cold, not too hot, not too soft sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully encouraging the first people who signed up to get involved, to start posting. There's a lot of modeling went on. Um, and as people started to comment and get involved, sort of you, you end up with a little bit of um, momentum going. But definitely this Goldilocks effect, if you're setting up a community, you're looking at one to two years minimum before it starts to really take off. So, participants, we started in 2010. This was a Ministry of Education funded project. Um, we started with 10 participants in 2010 from primary, secondary, and one tertiary teacher. They're across disciplines um, and uh, from all over New Zealand, so ge geographically uh, dispersed. 2011, we took on 12 people, um, and again, across New Zealand, this time only from primary and secondary, uh, but this time we brought in some principals and deputy principals as well as um, teachers. Now, one of the key things about the VPLD is we don't have a curriculum. It's a program, but we don't have a set curriculum. 
people come with <coughs> some ideas that at the very least they want to professionally develop. So it could be a project, it could be something that they want to work on. So they then work with a mentor and with the community to develop some goals, some learning outcomes, and then kind of a plan how to get there. They work with that mentor for the next two years, so there's duration built into it as well. Um, but very much this focused on you're working in your own context with your own students on your own project. We have quite a few different spaces, but the main one is the one in Nîmes. And the other thing that we do have um, once a year is a face-to-face -face meeting. We find that this really helps with the social cohesion um, and lots of, uh, and there, it's kind of really hands-on. So we ask participants in the VPLD to offer sessions um, and it's very much hands-on, active, lots of discussion, debates, that type of thing. The other um, so online spaces that we use are Adobe Connect, um, which is our webinar. We have something called Hot Seats once a month, where we have a guest facilitator come in. And so our last one, for example, did something on um, teaching as inquiry, which was, went down really well. And people can choose whether they come or not. Within the webinars, there's always back channels, so you've got people chatting around the subjects as well. So it's, again, very active, hands-on, and trying to model what people could then hopefully take away and do with their students. So, some of the findings. Um, we, uh, over the last two years, we've done a bit of a longitudinal study. It's a very small amount of quantitative data, mainly qualitative data. Uh, the data's been collected from um, transcripts of the, the um, conversations between mentors and mentees, uh, emails, the postings in the community, you, you name it, we've, we've sort of uh, uh, gathered data from that. We've also had a survey uh, at the very beginning of the year, mid-year and end of year. Um, and so, we, so that means we've been able to do some comparative work as well. So it's a bit, bit complex, but this, this is sort of some of the things that we're finding. Um, a little bit, uh, if, you, if you sort of start on the right-hand side, uh, where it's the skills area. So what we're finding is people a little bit uh, aligning maybe with um, Bloom's taxonomy, come in with maybe a focus on skills, um, focus on the technology, a focus with what can I learn to do um, to help my students. This then comes all the way around to um, issues of identity, confidence, leadership. Um, and some people come in at different places and come at this from a slightly different angle. But from the data, this seems to be a trend over the two years. So you can see from this, it's quite a complex interrelationship between working with a mentor um, and get, getting your ideas together, but then taking that out and being influenced by what's happening in the community, um, taking your, with your confidence in your hands and reflecting on what you're doing and taking that to the community and asking for help, and then um, pushing that into your model and you get that iterative cycle as well. Something that we found with some of the teachers, some of them are in little rural schools in the back of beyond, or they are the only, sort of they're the e-learning champion but with nobody following them at the moment within their school. And we've had quite a few people saying, nobody knows what I do, I feel so lonely. So coming into part of a community like this, all of a sudden they have affirmation as well as inspiration. Um, just thinking about what I was saying about the um, formation of an online community of practice. So unlike a community of practice where you're meeting face to face and you're having those big discussions, there's quite a few skills to be learned around how do you communicate online. So lots of modelling early on, um, how, how do you write a formative comment to somebody's reflective posting. And they, in this reflective posting they put their heart, heart out there. So how, how do you do that? Um, one of the big things I would definitely say you need in a community of practice online is a convener. So somebody who, you know yourself, that if you post something you think, oh, nobody's reading that. But if you get a comment back, you think, oh, cool, 
cool. <laughs> um, and then if you get a little bit of a discussion going afterwards, it, it was just like our students, it's like, yes. So it's kind of, um, with a convener, you can start to get the ball rolling on those types of things and nobody gets a sense that they're not being heard. Um, is it effective for our students and our students' achievement of learning outcomes? Just, um, this is from primary. One of the things that this guy was doing was using um, blogs and um, some of the other multimedia tools to really encourage his students to start very basic reflection on the work that they're doing. And this is just sort of one of the examples. You can see some of his students' blogs. You can see how he puts together some scaffolding. And one of the things um, that he encourages is for the parents to access this from home. Um, and the students get a real buzz out of the fact that their, their um, family and father are, are getting involved. And for sort of like uh, your data, this is the improvement of um, learning outcomes in standardised testing. You can see here, this is, this is quite early days when this is put together, but you can see that there was significant improvements in achievement in this case of um, ability in mathematics and with this one the guy was using Facebook and flash videos that could be put onto mobile phones to encourage his students to get excited about maths and to start to share some of their ideas around how to solve problems. Sort of some of the key recommendations. Um, it's really important initially to get that sense of community, so having a bit of a personal profile where somebody can put pictures of their dogs and their cats and their kids um, is quite important. Um, sh somewhere to share photographs. We, when it snowed, everybody showed, uh, shared photographs of their snowy pictures. Um, also really important, as, as I've already mentioned, making contributors feel valued, uh, re recognising that they've they posted and the work that they're doing. Um, we also use a, a monthly newsletter, sort of a roundup newsletter sent out to everybody to sort of say, here are the, key, here are the key things from uh, this month and here are some of our, our biggest contributors. And sort of just expect lurkers, there will be people who don't just jump in with both feet from the very beginning um, and they will need to just sort of be gently encouraged to start to take part and it may take them a year or so before they actually start posting, but they will. So, just sort of, I was listening to somebody in NASA who was saying that innovation isn't invention, it's reinvention. So, I guess with the snapshot that I've given you here with the Virtual Professional um, Learning and Development Program, gosh, it's a mouthful, mm -hmm. um, is that it's, it's reinventing certain aspects of professional development. You've still got all of the good stuff there, but it's just a, a different focus on something that we already do. And... So I'd like to just leave you with these questions. I'm not going to answer them, but just a couple of questions. If you were to take this into your own institutions that you would um, find useful to sort of start the top of all rolling.